to Reading nil in the FA Cup and Manchester United go through to the fourth round. Five wins from five. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with another win for Manchester United. And I tell you what, I'm just going to just absolve him of any blame in the performance today. It's reality bites. It certainly is. But the fact that he won that game quite comfortably with that performance from those players just shows um, the brilliance of, uh, of the positivity that Solskjaer is bringing to Manchester United at the moment. Um what I want to talk about is, the, is the, the the abysmal performance from Manchester United players today. There's no excuse. They're not, you know, they've not played together okay, and the, some of them might be struggling with match fitness. But the performance was a was was a joke. And you know, if ever there was an example of is it the manager or is it the players? To me, that was the players. The, 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 that was like if you took me if you took me to six weeks ago this game, I wouldn't have known Solskjaer was the manager. I would have presumed Mourinho was the manager. But we know how Solskjaer wants the team to play. So you know that that's the players. That is a, an abysmal performance. And the question really is, how many of them would you sell? How many of them actually put in a performance? I mean, let's not forget, this is Reading in a relegation battle in the Championship. And the quality of players that we have at United, every single one of them should have been 8 out of 10 today. How many of them did get 8 out of 10 against a Reading team that beat us on possession, beat us on shots and were the better team? So I think a lot of those players need a wake up call. And it's not on Ollie, It's not on the coaching staff. It's not on the club. That's on players who wear a Manchester United shirt and should be ashamed of their performances tonight. There is no excuse for laziness. There is no excuse for a lack of effort. And there is no excuse for sloppy performances like that. It was not good enough. Not good enough. My man of the match was Matteo Darmian. Now he, to me, Matteo is Matteo is the captain of Deadwood FC. We need to ship out Deadwood from Manchester United. We call them Deadwood FC because it goes back to goes back to Moyes days. Really, there's some players in that squad that we need to ship out. People say, Mark, why don't we sign Costa? Why don't we sign Pulisic? Why don't we sign Leon Bailey? We really need a right midfielder. Why would the club sign a right midfielder when you've got Lingard, Rashford, Martial, who are good, but then you've got Sanchez and Mata? And 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 they're not going to buy anybody when we've got five options. But unfortunately, two of those options are, I would say, not good enough anymore. Mata, this season in general, has started to become very inconsistent, which is not one matter. And he is 31 in April, so you wonder... And he's out of contract, and you wonder whether... Actually, I think ruthlessness and aggression is really important at United in the transfer window. And I think that we we need to be ruthless. We need to be ruthless. And it's the, I never thought I would say this, but 31 in April, the game passes him by because he's just not quick enough anymore. I say let's send Matter off to Spain. You know, I really, I, I never thought I would say that, but I do, I think that... If we want to take, if we want to progress, and for me, I don't know what you lot thought, but take Darmian out the, the equation. I thought our two best players were Dar was uh, Rashford and Chong when they came on. I thought Fellaini was as bad as anybody else. He looked lazy as well. I don't know why so many players couldn't be asked today. Maybe they've got the hump because they've not been picked for the team. I don't know. You know that's bad attitude as far as I'm concerned. But Rashford came on, and a lot of things didn't go his way. But the intensity, the speed, the the fight. He was one of our better players. Um, and Chong, uh, to me, was the positive. There was no expectation on a kid like that to come into the team. He got himself booked. He was pointing out to people where he wanted the ball. He nearly had a good couple of runs. I, I was really, really, really pleased to see him. But the the, the general performance, I, I, I mean, there's so many things to talk about. I'm just ecstatic that we've won the game. And I think the reality bites thing really pleased me as well, because I think for the last few weeks we've been like, oh, everything's great. Everything's super. And what Mourinho did at United was abysmal, but and he was 90 percent the problem. But there is still a problem that was there before Mourinho, before Van Hal and, and, and when Moyes was there. We've got a lot of players that aren't good enough to be in our squad and we need to kick those players out and start bringing players through from the youth or bringing players in from outside. We have got a bloated squad and there are too many players earning a living and wearing a shirt who should not be wearing a United shirt. And I think we need to be ruthless as a club and start moving some of those players out. And that's the brilliance of the, the, the game today is that there are players there who we've won that game, but they're just not good enough. They don't. Every single player on that pitch should have been smashing the door down. Positivity. Look at what United have done. Six points off fourth. Mourinho's gone. 
the, the wind of change, the positivity, Solskjaer engaging with the club, knowing what this club's all about. Those players got an opportunity today and they should have been running around 100 miles an hour on their game, mentally on it, thinking, we're only playing fucking Reading. I'm going to get a 9 out of 10 performance today and I'm going to get in the manager's mind to start pushing my way into the first team. Who did that? Matteo Darmian. Bloody hell. He's the only player who grabbed the opportunity today. The only one. Why? Why did nobody? Why was nobody up for it? And I know some people will say, I mean, the Dillinger compound says Fred was atrocious today. I want to talk about individual performances. Of course I do. And um, Philip Burton would say, so that shirt should mean something when you put it on. Sanchez isn't earning his money. He's finished. Um, I, I give Oli a 10 out of 10. I think he's a fantastic manager for Manchester United and he's doing a great job. But I think in his mind, he'll be almost happy that it's like, I can't do it all. There are problems at this club. This squad... It's not a great squad. There is a lot of investment needed. There's a lot of ruthless decisions that need to be made. But I'm I'm confused. I'm confused. And I, I, I take this away from Ollie and the coaching staff. This is about the playing staff. And I cannot understand for the life of me, in the positive vibe that, that Ollie has brought into the club, why are players who came on the pitch today or started on the pitch today, why are they not able to put in a performance? Where Where is the performance? Where is the intensity? Where is the press? Where is the pass forward? I can't tell you why, but it's almost like they can't be asked, And that, to me, is unforgivable. There were so many poor performances from United today. So many poor performances. Romero, OK, he's the goalkeeper. He actually made some good saves. He's a good backup goalkeeper, and that's his role at United. I'm happy with that. Delo, I thought in the second half he, came, he got better when Chong came on. Um, and he got better when Chong came on because in, for the first half, he's got McTominay and Mata ahead of him. Slow Mata, invisible McTominay. How can Delo do what he's all about, go forward? Effectively, he was a right back who couldn't go past the halfway line. So it wasn't a good performance from him. Darmian was my man of the match. Uh, Phil Jones didn't really do anything wrong. Ashley Young was shit. Absolute crap. He's our captain. He's 34 in July. Why do we want to keep Ashley Young? The only, I, I, even my mind today, I was like, Ashley Young had two good runs and he scored a goal a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, you know, he's good when he does that. But then it clicked. He's a winger. That's what Ashley Young's always been. He's a fucking winger. That's what he does. He is a right winger or a left winger. That's his job. So why do we all go, wow, when Young skips past the player and puts a cross in or scores a goal? That's what he is. He's a winger. He's not a fullback. He's a crap defender. Absolutely crap. He's a good winger. He should be used as a backup winger. The only positive things to Ashley Young's game is what a winger would do. He's not a fullback and he was crap today. Absolutely rubbish. Um, Pereira. Oh, I don't even want to talk about Andreas Pereira. How many times have I said that Andreas Pereira is a good enough player for United? Um, I think he needs to. I think he needs to go, and I think he will go. I thought it was. He just didn't grab the opportunity. There were glimpses, there were glimpses, but in a game like that, against an opposition like that, I can't say what I'm going to say about McTominay and not do the same to Pereira. Pereira has got the ability to be a really good player. It's not going to be at United, is it? It's not. He's not grabbed the opportunity there. I don't understand why. Um, at times he looked disinterested. He's out of contract in the summer. He's obviously going to go. He looks like he's made his mind up already. And we're just going to have to wash our hands of him and let him go. And it's very sad. I like Pereira. I've stuck up for Pereira for so long. I still think he could be a really good player for United. But I don't understand why he's not grabbed the opportunity today. There were glimpses, but there was more bad than good. And I'm really disappointed. But at least with Pereira, I can see it. I've always seen it. He's got a good shot on him. He's got a good eye for a pass. He's a good player. Elect. He could be a really, really good player. But he's just not grabbing it. Um, Dyes... Die Easy Guy says, your man Andreas was turd, get rid, and Fred too. I can't disagree about Pereira. It's really sad. But you know what? We've got to be ruthless at Manchester United. We've got to be ruthless. And if they're not good enough, they need shipping out. Scott McTominay. Pff, God. I said before the game, let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance because everybody who's been crap under Mourinho deserves a chance. I don't get it. I don't get it with McTominay. I really don't. He can't run. He's not good on the ball. He's not good in the air. He's not a good tackler. He's not good at pressing. I don't get it. I actually feel sorry for the lad. I think Scott McTominay was a um, a political pawn in a game that Mourinho was playing. 
Mourinho needed to use a youth player to say, I use the youth. He created this Player of the Year award, which was a joke that he gave him at the end of last season. Um, he played him a little bit last season. But basically, Mourinho has used McTominay because there's nothing about McTominay that's good. He's not, he's not even... I don't think he could play for Reading, a team that's going to get relegated from the Championship. There's nothing about the lad. He's, he's, he's just not very good. Um, and I think Mourinho used him because he was tall. He looked in the youth setup and went, I don't really want to use any youth, but you're tall, you'll do, and I'm playing the youth. And I think he's been used. I feel sorry for the kid. He has been used, he's had his expectations, boosted up to a massive level, and he's not good enough. He is not good enough for Manchester United. And he needs to go on loan to the MK Dons and build his career again because there's nothing about him at United that makes me think he should ever play for us again. I really don't. Until he can prove himself, I don't think he should be getting first team opportunities again. There's nothing to his game that's that that makes me think, oh, he's good enough. Maybe I'm being harsh. I don't think I am. Um, as for, for for Fred, 50 million quid for what at the moment? Um, I, I was really surprised with Fred though because he, there was some good bits, more than Pereira, but there were some bad bits. But I was surprised Fred got took off after an hour. Um, Solskjaer was probably obviously very unhappy with him to take him off because to me McTominay should have come off for Fellaini Fellaini needed to come on because we needed to solidify the midfield it was a defensive move but I was surprised he took Fred off but um, I didn't think his performance was bad enough to, for him to be subbed but Fred's a concern he is a concern it's, he has a heavy first touch for a Brazilian he has a heavy first touch and his second touch is, is almost having to be a tackle because his, his touch is so heavy. Um, not good from Fred. Um, Benjamin Caldal says Romero is good enough to leave and play in a team. Um, he is. He's a good backup keeper, Romero, to be fair. Um, please do drop a like on the video. I've still got loads to talk about. Um, let's talk about Alexis Sanchez. Right. I said about Alexis Sanchez when he went off, he can go. I'm, I've, I've had... I've, 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 I don't see the points in Alexis Sanchez at United anymore. And I got a lot of stick for it on Twitter. And I understand that it's always about different opinions. But my opinion on Sanchez is this. That's Reading. All right, you went off injured. You can't help that. But that's Reading. You are the best paid player in the Premier League. The best paid player in Premier League history. When you're on a pitch against Reading, you should be Lionel Messi. You should be running that game. That is what you are paid to do. That is what you were brought to this club to do. You've been sh a shambles for a year, mate. An absolute shambles for a year. There's a new setup now. You're playing songs on Instagram when Mourinho's been sacked. We expect to see the real Alexis Sanchez. I ain't seen anything. Two assists. Two passes I could make. You know, what about winning when you're on the ball, skipping past players? All you ever do is cut back on the right-hand side and try and play a chip pass. There's nothing. You don't run at players. You don't use your left foot. You don't shoot from distance. Every, you're so easy to you're so easy to read. You're the best paid player in the fucking league, and you're playing like a Chilean Marcus Albrighton. It ain't good enough. It's not good enough. People are. I've been at Old Trafford this season. I've seen Sanchez come on, and some people are applauding him because he does a ten yard pass. That's how low he's got the expectations. People need to realise Sanchez isn't being judged on the level of Fred or McTominay or Lukaku. He's being judged on the level of of Salah. That's what he's been paid to do for United. That's what he should be doing. That's what we paid him to do. And he doesn't do it. And people want to give him more chances. He is not anywhere near the level he's meant to be at. He's, and I'm not having it. I'm, for me, no. Nah, forget it. Forget it. He is nowhere near. We are lowering our expectations to give a number seven a fucking chance. He is meant to be a Mo Salah, a Kevin De Bruyne, an Eden Hazard. That's what we paid for. And we're getting Marcus Albrighton. That's what we're getting. He's not good enough. Not good enough. He can still turn it around. Of course he can. But how long is he going to be injured for now? The guy's 31 in December. We've wasted a year of, four, of however much a, a week. And he's always looking for an excuse. No, no, no. And also, why are we playing him on the left wing? Why are we playing him on the left wing? Is it because he doesn't want to play on the right wing? Is it in his contract he plays on the left wing? There's no sense to it. Martial's better. And also, when he does play there, he can never play with Pogba because he'll wander into Pogba's space and make Pogba shit again. So, uh, Sanchez for me, I know a lot, oh, two assists in 90 minutes. Lukaku scored three goals in two games. He's still crap. You know, P 
people get blinded by a, by by stats. And and let's do Lukaku because Lukaku scored a goal one on one. If Lukaku wants to sit on our bench and and be our sub and score goals, I'm happy. He's a brilliant bench player to score goals. Do you think he's happy to sit on United's bench? I, I don't blame him. I don't think he will. He wants to be United's number nine. He scores a goal from a one-on-one. -on -one, great. He scores a tap-in against Newcastle from a good run from a free kick. Great. The first minute of the second half, a pass goes to his feet and it goes through, through him like the invisible man. His build-up play today was atrocious. His passing was abysmal. But, oh, he's got three goals in three games. Let's play him up front. No. Nah. Marcus Rashford's the number nine. Anthony Martial's on the left wing. Lingard plays off the right because Mata, Lukaku and Sanchez are not good enough. They're not good enough for United. And that's why we look like a Mourinho team today because it's slow, static. Lukaku can't hold the ball up. Sanchez always wants to cut inside and Mata's too slow. That's ruthless. That's harsh. That's football. That's my opinion. And this is why we need to go in the transfer market, but we probably won't because we need to get rid of the deadwood first. And I'll come on to what I wanted to say here. And I want to read some of the comments out. I'm, I'm absolutely ecstatic we're through. I'm so happy we're through. I'm absolutely ecstatic with what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is doing. I just want to reiterate here. This is not about moaning about Manchester United and where we're going. This is not about moaning about the manager. This is about something that many of us have been talking about for four or five years. That we've got Deadwood in the squad. And we're not going to progress as a club until we get rid of that deadwood. Because Pogba will get injured. Rashford will get injured. Martial will get injured. The problem is, you've got to have a good squad. And if Pogba or Rashford or, or Martial get injured, you've got to play Fred. You've got to play Lukaku. You've got to play Sanchez. They're not good enough. We need a better squad. We need to cut the deadwood. So going through that team to me, who I would let go, and it hurts to say this, Young needs to go. Damian needs to go. Pereira needs to go. McTominay needs to go. Sanchez needs to go. Mata needs to go. Lukaku can stay if he wants to sit on the bench. Um, Fred needs more time. Jones at the moment, we've got no centre-back, so you'd keep him. And Delow is obviously one for the future, and Romero is a good backup. But I, 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 I think this is... This is the next step for United. I think with Solskjaer, we might have our next manager. If not, we'll probably get Zidane. That's fine. That's progress. We now need to be looking at... The, I like I like what's happening at Manchester United. Smash a like on the video if you like it. I like what's happened today because we've sorted the manager situation out and we're moving forward. We're now focusing on the playing staff. We now need to look at the playing staff. That squad, as we've been saying for a long time, Deadwood. We need to start moving it out. And that's what we need to do. And people are saying, no, don't get Matter out. Oh, I love Matter's blog. I think what he does for charity is great. I think he's been a fantastic Premier League player. But he's 31 in April and he's out of contract. You're keeping him for nostalgia. You're keeping him for romance. We need to move forward. What does he offer Manchester United? He's too slow. He was rubbish against Newcastle. And he can't, he can't even have a good game against Reading. Matter wore the number eight because he always gave a consistent eight out of ten performance. This season, he's, we've seen a drop off. Why would you give somebody another contract? You've got to be ruthless. I don't want it. I don't want Pereira to go. I don't want Pereira to go. But we've got to be ruthless. They've they have they've had their opportunities and they're not grabbing them. Um, and there's no excuse for that today. There's no excuse for that today. Keep up the top work, Mark. Have a really good year, says Logan. One ninety nine. Uh, Valencia needs to go, but he didn't play today. He's slow and weak. He's past it. It's his playlist account. Um, we need to be ruthless. Look, people don't like it, but we do need to be ruthless. This is not about, you know, the manager's gone. That's right. I've said it before. The manager's gone. That's fantastic. But we need to move players out of that squad. If you want a new centre-back, you want a new centre-defensive midfielder, you want a new right midfielder, you want a new striker, you've got to move players out. We've got over 20 internationals in our squad. You can't just get rid of... I mean, Fellaini needs to go as well. You can't just get rid of Fellaini and Darmian. You've got to get rid of about five players. And in that five players, we've got players at the moment. Phil Jones, Ashley Young, Juan Mata, Andreas Pereira, Ander Herrera, um, Chris Smalling, I think, has signed this. There's five players there whose contract's up. Are you going to give them all a new contract? Marcus Rojo needs to go as well, Shivam, you're right. 
Um, could it be the fitness of the squad? Says Adri. I don't. I don't think it's the fitness of the squad because how come the first team played well and this and that lot couldn't play well? Their fitness shouldn't be fine. Andreas looks depressed. Uh, depressed says Red Devil. I don't think it's a problem of ability. He's proper depressed. He, you're right. He does. He doesn't look interested. And that to me, maybe Arsenal want him. I don't want Pereira to go, but I think today I just didn't see. I didn't think he he um, he grabbed the opportunity at all, and I think that is. I think so many players didn't grasp the grab the opportunity today. I re and I and I and I wonder why. I really do. Um, but I think I was pleased with that game today because it just opened our eyes up again to the fact that the squad's not good enough, and we need to move some of these players on. Um, and Solskjaer will know that. He'll be like, that wasn't my performance today. That wasn't the way I've been playing football. Why are these players not able to do it? I think Fellaini was quite interesting. I thought Fellaini was... Why did Fellaini not start? And then when he came on, he looked very... Fellaini looked very couldn't be asked. Like, not that they're not trying. He was certainly trying. But he looked very like he knew his time is over at United. Because he wasn't bombing up to get in the box on the end of the hoof ball. Because we weren't hitting the hoof ball. Uh, he was just sat in the midfield, keeping it simple. I think Fellaini will, will move on from United. Unless we get another new manager in who likes him, I think Fellaini's days are numbered at United. Um, Fred bye-bye, says Tarhaig. It's a big hit to take on, on, on Fred, to be fair, isn't it? It's a very big hit. Um, right, let's do the player ratings anyway, because a lot of people are saying that. So Romero, I'd give a seven because he made good saves. Delo, I'd give a five. It wasn't a good performance from Delo. You know, you've got to be honest. It wasn't. Um, Darmian, I'd give a seven. I thought he played really, really well. Uh, Jones, I'd give a six. Uh, Ashley Young, a four. I thought he was terrible. Um, Pereira, four. Not good enough. McTominay, four. Not good enough. Fred, five. I thought it was not terrible, but not good enough. Uh, Sanchez... I'm going to give Sanchez a six. I thought it was average, but this is my point. He should be nine. He should be playing nine out of ten, not six out of ten. He's the best paid player in the league. He's meant to be this star player. He's playing Reading and he puts in a six out of ten. Not good enough, but average. Mata, four. Not very good from Mata. Lukaku, six. Average. Um, he scored a goal, so I've got to give him a six. But his build-up play wasn't very good. And that 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 makes me that that comes back to my I'll give the subs a, 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 a one as well. Uh, Rashford seven, Chong seven, Fellaini five. Um, but I said at the start of the game when you're playing a Championship opposition like Reading, every single United player should be putting in eight out of ten just because of the the ability gap between a Reading player and a United player. No player got eight out of ten. No player got eight out of ten. Every one of them should have done. And none of them did. Now, that's understandable for your subs, your Chongs, your Fellainis and your Rashfords because they're not on long enough. But what's the excuse for everybody else? Only Romero and Darmian get a 7 out of 10 for me. Nobody gets an 8 out of 10. And more than half the team are 5 or below. Not good enough. Not good enough from the players. Um, Chong got a 7 for me because of his attitude, his intensity, his... Um, and he, and he never stopped running. Same with Rashford. They did, Not a lot of things went their way, but I, I think that their attitude was right. Their attitude was right. And when so many players' attitude wasn't right, I will award player an extra point for their attitude. Rashford and Chong were a six, really, but their attitude was bang on. Seven, definitely. Um, average of five for the entire team, says Victor Odkin, yeah. Please do smash a like on the video, everyone. We're nearly at a thousand likes. Um, I do want to get into some of your comments, but it'd be nice to hit that. Let's have a quick look at what people are saying. Um, I think I think what you I think you've got to I think what you've got to do is is not go too hard, not not get too. I'm I'm certainly not ranting and not, not by any means because I'm very happy with what's happened at the club. I'm very happy with Oli Oli. I'm very excited about the where the club's going. I'm just very disappointed with the players today. And as I said, Oli can't paper the cracks. There's, there's there's big crack cracks in that club, and it's not he can't just switch it. You know, he can't make lazy players bad players good players. He can make them better. But he can't make he can't solve the problems. He's not got a magic wand. And I'm pleased with that performance today because we won. 
but I'm pleased that it highlighted so many problems that are still at the club. And that is individual players. There's, there are players that, that shouldn't be in that squad. Um, and, you, you know, I think Greenwood and Gomez had injuries today, but I'd love to have seen them on the bench and kicked some of those players out who did play and kicked them out of the club altogether because they're just not good enough. Um, Byron Hall, say Joe, so Jose's right about Fred and Pereira and a centre-back. Fuck off. Seriously, fuck off. You know, how can any... Where have you been, mate, under a rock for four weeks? They're all, there's still Mourinho inners breathing out there. Mourinho's not right about anything. He's a virus. He's gone. He's dead. He's finished at Manchester United. Goodbye. Get lost. He's not right about anything. He's gone. Dapo 2018. Imagine if we'd listened to Jose and let Pogba go. Yeah, he's wrong about that. Um, Logan says, keep up the top work. Have a good year. We've done that one. Bjorn Lundberg says, Sanchez is over the hill. The cat is out the bag. We bought a big name of the past and he will never be back because he's done at the top level. I think it's all about levels with, with Sanchez. I think Sanchez can be a good player, but I don't think people realise we were buying a Hazard. We were buying a De Bruyne. We were buying a Salah and we're paying him that, that amount of money to do that. And he's nowhere near that. And he's never going to be near that. Um, Depo says everyone wanted Pogba to leave. Imagine if that midfield was our first team midfield. Yeah, good point. Jose Hangover says Simon, Simon Tack. You could put it down to that. It certainly felt like it. Fred was atrocious today. Uh, we've read that. Yeah, yeah, look. All I would say is the big things from that game, reality bites, and we needed, a, we needed reality to bite, so that's fine. So reality bites... And you've got to ask yourself a question. What would you do with that team? Are you willing to stick by some of those players or is it time to move them on? And we've been talking about Deadwood for so long. I think it's time that we got rid of it. Uh, Giorgio Mella says, I disagree with you about Mata. David Silver is 32, but look how Pep plays him as a midfield maestro. He's class. Master is, Mata is simply not a winger. Oh, mate. I love Juan Mata, but there's a world of difference between David Silva and Juan Mata. David Silva's arguably one of the top 10 players the Premier League's ever had, and he's quick. Mata, I think Mata's done. I do. I think he's lost another yard of pace, and he wasn't the quickest anyway. Um, I think Juan Mata should go to Spain. Um, I don't think we should give him a new contract. I think we will. But the thing about Mata is, I think we all love Juan Mata, but if we move him on, we can buy a right midfielder. So that's the way I look at it. If we move Mata... If we're having a discussion about Matter, then clearly there's a discussion to be had. There is an element of doubt. He's 31 in April, he's out of contract, and there's an element of doubt because we're having the discussion. I personally think because we're having the discussion, move him on and buy a right midfielder. You know, you could bring Douglas Costa in, you could bring Leon Bailey in. There, there is an opportunity to do that. It is ruthless, but I, I think we need to do it. Um, Dan O'Keefe will know where we stand after the Spurs and PSG game. I think we also know where we stand, Dan, because we also now that know that Rashford, Martial and Lingard are our front three. We also know that Matic, Pogba and Herrera are definitely our midfield three. What the worrying thing is, beyond those, if any of them get injured, we've got problems. You know, I'm happy with that. Martial, Rashford, Lingard, until we can buy somebody better, happy with that. Uh, Matic, Herrera and Pogba, happy with that until we can buy somebody else. Defence, sure. Lindelof. We still need a centre-back to play with Lindelof. De Gea in goal. The right-back still up for grabs. I mean, who who's the right-back? I don't know. Um, we need a right-back, don't we? Or we need Delo to step up his game a bit. But uh, we at least we know what our best eleven is. Um, we haven't known that for three years. That's a big positive as well. We do know what our best eleven is. So that's good. Um, Matter isn't a right-winger. No, he's not, Eamon. But we don't play with a number 10. So... It's like, I was talking about Christian Eriksen the other day. I wouldn't sign him. We don't play with a number 10. We're never going to play with a number 10. We don't play with a number 10. We play with a more advanced midfielder, which is Pogba. We play with a box-to-box, -box, which is Herrera. And we play with a CDM, which is Matic. There is no number 10 in our system. We play with a right-sided attacker and a left-sided attacker. Mata can only play as the right-sided attacker. And he ain't got the pace for it. So there's no place for Mata in our team. Sir Alex would be ruthless, Joe. We need to be ruthless. There's some really nice lads. There's some players I really, really like. But we've got to be ruthless. If you want your club back, we're on the first step. We're on the first step to getting our club back. And uh, we need to be ruthless. We need to get rid of the Deadwood. And you almost need to move on from your fan favourites. I love Pereira. What have I just said? I think he needs to go. He looks like he needs a new challenge. He looked like he wasn't up for the challenge today. 
It was a massive opportunity and he got a 5 out of 10, a 4 out of 10. He's, he needs to move on. And, and, you know, if I can do it about Pereira, who I've been on about for years, and I hope to God he can still turn it around and he stays, but after today, I just don't see how he can. So if I can say it about Pereira, that's ruthless because anybody who watches this show will know I love Andreas Pereira. And if I'm saying I think he needs to go, that's, I've got, if I'm, you know, we've got to be ruthless. The club's got to be ruthless. It's time to build this club again. We need players who, when they're given an opportunity like that, they do put an 8 out of 10 in. Um, who would you swap for Sanchez or who for? Dan O'Keefe. I don't know who would want him. I don't know who would want him. And I don't think Sanchez is going anywhere, by the way. But um, he might be out for a month now. He might be out. Who knows? Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Please do drop a like on the video. Absolutely loved the shows today. I really like that we've won today. I really like the manager change. And I really like... Actually, I like the fact that we put a performance in like that today because it's a bit of a reality bite and it reminds us that there's still a lot of work to be done in our club. I hope the club have the balls and the ruthlessness to go and do it because there's a lot of players that need shipping out and we need to start bringing some players in. And I hope the club start doing it because then we will get our club back. Thanks everyone for watching. Fan cams are coming in. Interested to see what the fan cams have got to say. We'll be talking... Um, Fans at the ground, what have they got to say? They'll be coming in in the next half an hour or so. Thanks everyone for watching. Please do drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new and I'll speak to you all soon.